Um, just shifting gears, because you know a, a lot of our audience they, they are lawyers um, and in-house counsel as well. Um, why do you think that a company needs a social media policy? That's a good question. I, you know, at first I would say that I think actually most companies probably don't need just one, and maybe policy isn't the right word, but you know what I usually uh, suggest to organizations is that they probably need one set of guidelines or policy that sort of broadly applies to all of their employees. And that, you know, number one, you have to sort of touch the kind of minimum required comments like, you know, respect others, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you know, to sources, don't say things that are illegal, and so on. <laughs> In the industry, we call that boilerplate, right? <laughs> it's yeah, exactly. And that's what, you know, if you look on the site, you'll see there's a lot of that in there. And the study that you mentioned, uh, which thank you for mentioning, kind of shows that. Then beyond that, sort of the next step is really thinking ahead of your employees about what are the boundaries that you'd like to set or the smart limitations uh, that you'd like to establish for your employees to not only protect the company, but to also to just keep yourself or, or to keep the employees safe for their own benefit. So, uh, you know, do you want to allow employees to use company trademarks in their personal social media? Mm -hmm. So if an employee writes a blog post and uses the company logo, is that okay? Right. I mean, some companies say, fine, go ahead and do it. Some say, never do it. Some say, ask for permission first. And some say, you know, you're free to do it, but if you do that, then we own the content per your employment agreement. You know, based on your um, your report, you suggest the best practice that um, that employers shouldn't leave employees guessing about policies relating to use of company trademarks and social media. Right. But right. yet, only eighty three percent of the pol of the policies that you examined, eighty three percent of them had nothing about trademarks. Only seventeen percent right. had anything. Um, so what do you think accounts for a lack of policy provisions about trademarks or companies opening themselves up to confusion and misuse issues for their mark or, uh, well, not necessarily. I mean, I, you know, if, if you're an organization and you're kind of consciously deciding, well, employees can do whatever they want. We're not going to get upset about it. Then maybe you don't need to provide the guidance, but I think, uh, a lot of organizations are sort of rushing to, uh, mitigate risk. And they may not be thinking about that sort of second level of boundaries, and they're just trying to think about, okay, how do we make sure nothing really bad happens? <laughs> and let's get a policy out there, and that's fine. Right. Um, and you know, that's the beauty of the web is that it's all bits, and you know, in a month from now, they can change their social media policy. Let me probably should. let so me jump fine. on two things that you just said. One, um, which I think is great, uh, is, is this idea of of the web being bits. Um, and I think that, you know, with Web 1.0, a lot of companies may still be reeling from the beatings they took from, you know, hiring web people to create these static pages that are now, you know, very out of date or, or that every time they need to change it was thousands of dollars and that Web 2.0 and 3.0 and X.0, whatever you want to call it, affords more flexibility to people. So, I mean, you know, do, do you think that that changes some of of what companies need to do just in how explicit they need to word their policy. Can they be a little broader in their policy language? And the, and the second question I had for you um, is what's the worst that can happen? So <laughs> you mean in the absence of a policy? Um, I, I guess. Yeah. I mean, do you have, you know, the, the first question being, um, you know, more about the, the, uh, excuse me, about the trademark issues and, and um, you know, the, the, the drafting, whether whether the broad drafting is just a trend that you're seeing that company that's working for companies because of the flexibility of Web 2.0, you know, is it that because they can kind of change a page much more at will today, or or put up a blog post, you know, to rebut things or, or have a more flexible platform, that that there are sort of having a, a broader policy that that works in the in the Web 2.0 space, and then of course the second question, which is the big one, is you know, what's the worst that, that, that can happen? And rather than a speculative answer, I'd, I'd love to hear some examples of things maybe you've seen where yeah, companies sure. didn't have policies. So uh, the first question, I think, I think there's sort of an evolution with respect to social media policies. So the first stage is just that, let's just make sure we're saying the things that we know we need to say uh, with respect to maybe legal liability and, uh, and those kinds of things. Show good manners, be authentic, whatever. Yeah. Then there's sort of the second stage of evolution where companies start to say, all right, let's try and get out ahead of our employees and think about the things that maybe they haven't thought of. 
uh, that will either protect the company or that are unique to our company or um, that will help employees protect themselves. And then the third stage of evolution of these policies is where you know, organizations start to think about how they can use policies to provide guidance to their employees in a way that really helps differentiate them in the market. So I always hold up the Razorfish social media policy, which I think is one of the best examples of a company uh, who's thought about how social media can be used by their employees to differentiate the company in the market. Right. Zappos is another one, too. Sorry? Zappos is another one yeah. where... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, so you know, I think organizations are evolving through those stages, and obviously most people are sort of at that first stage. And so I don't know... You know, within that, I think there's a mix of organizations that are thinking, well, because we can change it, we should get something out there. There are also quite a few organizations that say, gosh, we're not really sure what all the answers are yet. We think we might want to wait to publish something. And so there's kind of a mix of, of across that spectrum. Is it is it smart for a company to wait? I don't think so. I mean, to me, I think that... Uh, the risk lies in not informing your employees. So, you know, to the extent that you can think about what either the boundaries might be that make sense for your organization or the opportunities to really empower your employees might be, why not let your employees know? Right. You know, 